Hello everyone and welcome back to Mentos Plays Our Darker Purpose, episode 11, which should be episode 12, but somehow episode 11 got lost in the ether, and so here we are with this being episode 11. Um, nothing all that interesting happened, really, all that happened was uh, I had heard that if you donated 500 credits to the counselor here, you did get a reward that was a new item um, that is supposedly very good. So I did go about unlocking that. Um, I think I heard about it back in the beta or the alpha, um, and heard that it, about its effect. Um, but yeah, so I got that unlocked. Other than that, I actually had a pretty poor run, so I'm kind of glad that it didn't save. Um, but yeah, we're going to go back in here now, and we are going to essentially be trying to make our way to the second chapter, since we have only completed the first chapter thus far. Um, we are now able to, if we beat the Wound Ward Fortress, move on to the uh, second area where we will be fighting against uh, enemies based from the Capulet group in the lore, which will be focused more on like magical ranged attacks instead of physical attacks, as these initial floors are based on. Get back here. There we go. Um, for this video, or I should say for the first video that we will reach Chapter 2 in, I am going to be uh, playing it through in one sitting. Or uh, one video, I guess I should say. Um, you know, looking at the past few videos um, and my experience overall with the first chapter, um, I think it's relatively safe to say that each chapter is going to take me about a half an hour. Um, and, that, that, and at that point, I think it would be wise to split videos up in the future. Um, so, you know, if I am doing a run and I get to chapter 4, I don't end up playing for two hours and getting one video out of it. Uh, plus 20% attack speed, plus 50 life. I'm going to take the 50 life. That seems like a good idea to me. Um, but yeah, you know, that way there I wouldn't have a two hour long video when we get to the later portion of the game. Um, you know, right now the most we're looking at with chapter 1 and 2 is a grand total of, what would it be? Uh, nope, we're fighting for Athi. That's not so bad. A uh, grand total of, you know, maybe an hour if both sets of floors took me a half hour. I am losing my mind here, concentrating on this fight. Um, but yeah, so that's not so bad, but once we get up to the point where it's like chapter 4, that's putting us at like two hours a run if we are going based on how long this first segment takes us. And that's not really a length of video I'm comfortable with recording and putting up. Not just for the fact that it would take ages to upload, but also for the fact that I know, at least me personally, when it comes to videos that long, it makes it a little bit easier to interrupt in the middle and then forget where you're at and not feel like watching the whole thing to figure it out. Um, so I would kind of prefer to keep the video shorter than that. So for the first time we get there, like I said, we're going to be just playing straight through. After that, we're going to be actually doing things a little bit more split up. Uh, we got two big floor and a sensitive floor. We're going to go sensitive. Um, yeah, we're going to be a little bit more split up in the future. Um, also, I want to say real quick, um, I know a lot of people here are here since yesterday when uh, Northern Lion mentioned me in his video about the sloth in Spelunky. Um, so for those of you who have come here since then, thank you very much for stopping by. Those of you who have subscribed, I appreciate it a lot. Um, I hope you enjoy the video, uh, both what is already up and what is still to come up as I continue to make more. Um, yeah, I, to be perfectly honest with you, and I will probably go into a little bit more detail about this in the Spelunky video I'm going to record tonight. Um, you know, I'm not necessarily the one who actually discovered the sloth, which is kind of what it came across as. Um, so just to kind of clear the air on that, it was actually, uh, someone posted a link to a video, I uh, not a video, somebody posted a quote, um, without a link, is what I'm going for, uh, to a description of how to unlock the sloth. Um, and, you know, a lot of us, we saw it as kind of just a rumor, and we jumped at the chance to go onto the game and check it out. 
Um, which, you know, obviously varying people as they one second. Plus 50 life again. Or 10% move speed plus one. We're gonna go with that. Um, but yeah, obviously a lot of us who were in, uh, Bananasaurus Rex's chat, which is where we were kind of all talking about what was going on and trying to figure it out. Um, this is 12 kills in a row without rolling. That's a very hard thing to pull off. Um. We were all talking about how to get it um, when someone quoted that, and essentially uh, after my personal trip into the game to confirm if it was right or not, I tweeted at Northern Lion, um, and since I was the first one to let him know about it, that's why he gave me a shout out. Um, so just to kind of make clear that someone else did figure it out, I have no idea who it was that was being quoted in that initial quote in the chat, but I do just want to make that clear from my own uh, standpoint that uh, you know if whoever is out there who did actually figure it out first I have never seen this boss before okay I guess we unlock some new bosses by way of um, beating the first chapter this doesn't seem so bad In fact, we are kind of tearing it up. Sensitive floor helps with that. And we've got a maze. Okay, not that way. Uh, this way. And this way. Up here. And. Okay, so after we hit it from the maze, it is going to create a new layout and push us back where we can hit it easily. I'm taking stupid amounts of damage. But we did beat it, and we beat it without failing a maze once, so we got a 100 credit reward. Um, now the question is, how many tokens do we have? Three. So we can't afford anything on this floor, so I guess we'll just move on. Uh, we did get a D, we can go sensitive, or we can go gluttonous. Um, we're gonna go sensitive. Um, we don't really have a whole lot in terms of items just yet, so I'm kind of trying to stick to a floor which I think will be a bit easier. Um, where was I? I got distracted by looking at the achievement for that guy. Um, you know what, I'm not going to use a juice box yet. Of course, we do have the item that is going to heal us for 20% at most every time we leave a floor. So we did get actually a very big heal of uh, 30 health at the end of that floor. Had we not taken so much damage against the boss, um, I, that would have actually put us into maximum health. But still, very, very useful. Um, we are essentially one juice box use away from full health. Let's kill off these slimes. Good. But yeah, so for those of you wondering exactly how that came to be, um, that's kind of the short, I mean, that's kind of the easy version of what exactly happened that led to the sloth becoming common knowledge how to unlock. Um, but yeah, I didn't personally discover it. I was just one of the people who confirmed what we had been a uh, message, what we had been quoted as a rumor, um, and I was the first one to tweet Northern Lion about it. So that wraps up my discussion on how exactly I managed to, uh, or how exactly that happened. Um, and like I was trying to say, I think, when I cut myself off, was, you know, if the person who did actually figure it out is watching this video and wants to say anything in the comments, feel free. Um, I'm not sure where that quote initially came from, as I mentioned, but, yeah, you know, um, I'm kind of happy that it got found, though. Um, we had a lot of people testing it out. Uh, Bananasaurus Rex, the guy who was streaming, who, if you don't know, is one of the top Spelunky players out there. Oh, God. No. Confusion. Um, but, yeah, he was uh, actually in the middle of trying to do a only walking run to see if that would unlock the sloth, because logic would dictate that a sloth will run would unlock the sloth, right? And... <laughs> So once someone posted that quote, we all kind of ran off to test it. But then he kind of didn't want to take just everyone random in the chat who was confirming its word for it. 
because he didn't want to ruin this no no running run that he had going and so he was kind of paranoid about you know breaking off his no run in case that was the right thing and people were just messing with him so he just kind of waited around for a mod confirmation before trying it but yeah we certainly had a lot of crazy theories last night about how the sloth would be unlocked and it turns out none of them were right on you slows down time so I'm not sure the student treaty was okay okay so I think this is actually kind of like an upgraded student treaty um, essentially because the student treaty is one second uh, plus 15 life enemies twice as likely to drop tokens or plus 20 damage I'm gonna go with the passive damage. Um, my reason for that is having more tokens drop, obviously with the perk we got earlier, is going to help us do more damage. But it not being persistent means that if we find a really good shop, I'm going to have to weigh out if I want to lose my damage or, uh, you know, get an item that would help me. I lose my damage and get an item that would help me or not. All enemies become light sources. That seems kind of cool, actually. Um, we can't really afford anything, but I am going to get a disquieting drought to make our juice boxes a little bit stronger. And I got so distracted with new items and everything that where I was going with what I was saying, I have no idea. And we get the Cauldron of Yesterdayers. So this is not too hard of a boss, especially when he's taking double damage. Um, it becomes much, much simpler to avoid him healing. It com becomes much simpler to kill him. Just all around, this is not that hard of a boss, especially in this situation. Barely made him not heal there, but these bubbles are going to help us out a lot. Obviously, the uh, shards of... Uh, obviously, the shards from Sudsy's Ice Tray will help me out, too. Okay, so slow down time. I think the main difference between slowing down time and I have taken way more damage than I should on this guy. He is not that bad. Um, but I think the main difference between slow down time and the enemy slow that we had before, uh, which is why I was getting at before I interrupted myself, is uh, that the slow down time will slow down everything, projectiles, enemies, everything in the room. Whereas the slows down enemies one will slow down them in their attacks, but it won't slow down projectiles. So definitely it is a valuable item to have. I think this is almost a direct upgrade to the student treaty um, in terms of versatility. So I am not going to complain about that item pickup, that's for sure. I need to get used to the fact that I'm not going to be doing as much damage because we aren't on a sensitive floor anymore. Let's get this guy out of the picture hopefully. Good. Pick up our tokens and move onwards. And again, as we get more and more uh, tokens, we are going to be doing more damage, which is of course going to lead to us killing things faster, taking less damage, and hopefully getting more and more tokens, which will lead to, again, more and more damage, and so on in the regular cycle of money-based power upgrades. Uh, around that. I really want to get rid of the green cloud spewer, but he is kind of hard to get to. Okay, if we can beat this floor, we can get to chapter two. Oh god, I can't get out. Oh, almost survived it without getting hit. I really want these clouds that are hanging out from the last guys to go away. Good. You can just kind of focus on this guy now this guy now, all smoky. So one thing I should add with my earlier comments about splitting... Oh god, I got hit. Oh god, no! Go away! Okay. One more hit should kill him. Come on, Bubbles, do my work for me. Thank you. Uh, what is this? 
Plus one chalk coin drop spawn from friend coin drop spawn friendly chalk clouds. That sounds really fun. Um, essentially, we're going to be getting free chalk. It appears um, every time a coin drops, we'll be getting one. So that is actually really cool. Oops, that was stupid of me. I got cocky. So yeah, what I was going for there, um, if I do start splitting up episodes when I get to chapter 2, um, and chapter 3 and so on and so forth, what I will do is if I die, you know, within like 10-15 minutes on the next chapter, I'll just upload it as one video, or I'll just upload it as a second video right afterwards, I won't actually, um, hold it off till the next day, um, because, you know, if it's that short of a time, that is being added, I might as well just upload it all at once, not turn it into two days worth. Oops. What is this? Sad chalking of chalk. Plus one chalk, 20% chance to not consume chalk on use. So we're getting a lot of chalk built up. Um, is there anything else in this room? It doesn't appear like it. I don't feel like dealing with all those fires and all those hands to figure it out. So onward we go, but yeah, you know, I don't want to put up a video that's, you know, 10 minutes long because it was chapter 2, um, as its own video for a day. Aha! It does do that. So, yeah, enemy drops a coin, we get a chalk cloud spawn. does make me kind of wish I had taken the perk for more often chalk cloud, I mean, more often coin drops because we get a lot of free passive damage from that. But I'm not going to complain about having it the way it is now. I'm just going to keep drawing this chalk cloud away, running and attacking them, and then moving out of the way when we have to. Which, conveniently enough, the way this timing is working out, by the time the cloud is getting to me over there, uh, it's actually running out and he's spawning a new one, which gives me the freedom to get out of the way. We've got uh, Carbovan Sense of Fear plus 9% dodge. We're going to pop a juice box and pick up another one. And we're going to deal with these guys. The champions of these are annoying when there are other enemies in the room. Their base version, it doesn't really matter much. I did take a little bit of damage from being a little bit too close to those desks down there. But not the end of the world for sure. Okay, that was an easy enough room. Oh, we do have a uh, wardrobe up there, so we are going to have to kind of keep an eye out for that. I haven't been using my time slow much at all, which I really should be, because that is a very beneficial item to have. In fact, oh, I just used the juice box instead of the slow time. Almost got her without getting hit. Almost pulled it off. So, I mean, the juice box wasn't wasted. We certainly had enough health missing to where it got its full healing effect. But still disappointed to have accidentally used the juice box instead of the on-use um, item. So now this guy, as long as I stay up here where that can't reach me, I am fine. <sighs> the merit bracelet is really, really useful. But I don't think I am willing to spend 15 on it. Um, what we're actually going to do is a vexing vial and one extra juice box. It does lower our damage. I probably should have fought the boss first and then done that afterwards. But we're going to make this work. Especially with time slow, we can get away with things a little bit. Okay, so we got one building down. Okay, we got a lot of chalk clouds coming at us. Now we got this guy who is right on top of me. I should consider using chalk clouds on this guy again. It did help us out a lot last time. Okay, so now we got two buildings down. I guess we can just kind of focus on any of the other buildings now. Oh god.
it is hard to keep track of the buildings down here, all the shots, and everything, but, oh, I got hit even with time slowed. That is disappointing. Oh my god, why am I so bad? I'm mad because I'm bad. Uh, let's see now, we are going to just kind of focus on taking out any one of these first. Because there is really no reason not to try to focus a little bit. Oh my god. Okay. Get me through this, thank you. And once we take this out and we don't have to deal with the chalk cloud spawns, we can focus on the fortress. Which is going to be a lot easier um, until Goneril spawns, of course. Because there is much less to worry about now. On a slow time, get some shots in here while we can. And if we get a little bit more close, we uh, have Whispers activated, of course. So that means that we'll do more damage, which slowing time allows us to do much easier. And we're just going to keep dodging. Of course, if you're unaware, the hitboxes in this game tend to go from about the head, I'm from about the neck to the feet. So a lot of the dodges I'm doing here are based off of knowing that if it hits my head, I'm fine. It's when it hits my body that I have to worry. I'm trying my best to not take any more damage, because the next couple of floors are going to be very difficult um, to get through. Um, especially with me not being experienced in how they go for the current build. Um, you know, it is not going to be a simple transition to new bosses, new floors, and everything. Okay, that part's done. The hard part is over. So now I have heard that these chalk clouds down at the bottom don't actually damage you once uh, the fortress is destroyed, which is something that I was not actually aware of if that's the case. Um, I don't really think that this is the run that's best to test it on since I am not doing the best for resources, but I think that uh, it is something that I want to test in my off time um, when I'm not recording so that I know if it's safe for future recordings. Get away from me. Of course, the worst thing about a time slow is the fact that you have to be aware of when the time slow ends. I am going to pop a heal there because we are getting kind of dangerous. But we are going to clear this floor and get to chapter 2 on this run, that's for sure. You certainly do progress in terms of being able to get through the early chapter very quickly. Um, because once you kind of know what you're up against, it's not nearly as bad. So we unlock Goneril's Mallet, and we have made it through Chapter 1 again. Uh, leaderless is horrible. Wealthy will be a lot of coins, but no machines. This one has a lot of leaders up ahead, so we're going to go there. Uh, plus 5% move speed, double the likelihood of a memory room. Or plus 5 damage, juice boxes permanently increase damage by 2. I'm taking that one. It's still relatively early in the run. Um, and any kind of passive damage gain that we're going to be getting anyway um, is definitely a big help. You know, we're going to be using juice boxes, so why not get a little bit more out of it? So now we do want this guy to open up these coins for us. And we do want to get rid of these. Come on. Thank you. And now we can kill this guy nice and freely. The Mild Philosopher. You don't seem so mild, or uh, much of a philosopher, to be honest with you. Generally, philosophers I don't picture kind of running around on their knuckles. It's just kind of not really a uh, behavior that is commonly associated there. Plus one chalk, your chalk clouds now fire arrows. Okay. That is a good item. Our chalk clouds are getting very, very powerful, all things considered. So now we're just going to keep kind of switching off between these two and hitting them when we can. There is actually an easy way to dodge those guys, but the train has to be open to it, and in that case it was not. Um, get away from me. 
I do kind of dislike this layout just because it can be very hard to hit the chair throwers consistently. But we'll make it work, of course. Not too concerned. We're doing decent damage. We did get through the first chapter, which is obviously a big plus. I would like to unlock the mallet. I have heard good things about that item. Um, I don't actually know what it does, but I have heard that it does some good stuff for you. Um, excuse me. Would you mind sticking around here for a bit? Yes, we'd like to, you to mediate a dispute we're having. They're claiming that one of the potatoes in our sack belongs in their sack. If you have a few weeks to hear us out, we'll appreciate it. Yeah, we'll get, probably get started next Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you, potato sacks. Okay, so now I should be able to kind of, yes, grab myself a little bit of a safe zone from one of them here. And then get a safe zone from the other over here. Ooh, that is awesome synergy that I had not considered. So because every time a coin drops, we fire a chalk cloud, and because our chalk clouds fire arrows, now every time an enemy drops a coin, we have... Oops, I delayed too long before rolling there. But now every time an enemy drops a coin, we not only get a chalk cloud spawn, but we also have a... Uh, bunch of arrows to fire out in all directions to help to make us capable of uh, killing more stuff. What is this? Plus 15 Edgewood Meritus tokens. Given the fact that we get damage from having money, that is a good thing to get. Um, and of course it means that the vending machine on this floor will be extremely useful um, should we choose to go for it. Okay, so now we got Mr. Green Cloud here, who is kind of annoying. Because if he hits you, things get very bad. Very bad, very quickly. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, get away from that guy. Let's take out this other chalk spewer. Hey, that went very quickly, actually. And another chalk upgrade, it appears. What are you going to do? Plus one chalk, your chalk clouds now heal you for standing in them. Okay, I mean, it's not a huge heal, but that was significant. So, pretty much, if we want to subtitle this run, it is the run of chalk because we have gotten so many more chalk upgrades than I've actually ever even seen before, nonetheless in a single run, that, uh, yeah, it makes things very nice for us when we use chalk. Um, and chalk is very useful against bosses in general, so if we could get to the chapter boss, I might be able to just spam chalk at some point and take her out that way. And we got a chalk cloud to spawn there because we got a coin drop. I am really, really liking this build that we have going here. I mean, it's not the best build that I've ever had in this game, I don't think, although it's probably pretty up there. Um, but it is certainly one that is giving us a lot of good stuff to do. Thank you for that dodge game. I should have taken a hit to a slime. Instead, I did not, and I dodged it and didn't take any damage. Of course, have to be a little bit careful killing things around those little battery situations we got going on over there, as it can result in you getting hit when Sudsy's ice tray procs. Okay, let us take out this last dude. Excellent. We have found our boss room, but I do want to explore the rest of the floor before we go in there. Apologies for that. Um, <coughs> going to take a drink once we get back into a safe room. Cursed Art Supplies. Attacks have a 5% likelihood of instantly killing an enemy. And that's why I heard it was very good. Um, I don't think I ever actually picked that item up for myself in the beta. Uh, one second, please.
I don't think I ever actually picked that item up for myself in the beta, but um, obviously, you know, one in every 20 shots instantly killing an enemy is a pretty big plus. Um, especially when you get leaders who have, you know, higher HP than their normal selves. That is a very big helper. We are taking a lot more damage to the Candelabra of Longing than I really have any reason to take. And we also didn't find a vending machine on this floor, which is rather surprising to me. Oh god. Why? Why, 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 why? I'm gonna pop a juice box. That's gonna increase our damage a bit too. And then we're gonna slow time again. Which doesn't last for long. I would really like to get another use item. Um, this one is very useful, don't get me wrong. But I feel like there are ones that would be more on to my taste of what a use item can do. Um, you know, this one has a long enough cooldown where a lot of times it does seem like it is not as useful as it could be. Um, just to make sure we explored the whole floor. Oh, we actually did miss a room, so we might have a... Uh, the things the monsters carried, plus 5 damage, or plus 5 life adds an extra life. I really want this because they're going to drop tokens more often and use chalk clouds, but an extra life is insanely valuable. There's the vending machine. Um, let's see now. Parade, pinwheel, move speed bonuses also apply to attack range. Um, that's really good. Increases light radius significantly, not as good. Um, I am going to buy two juice boxes for sure. Um, we're going to get healed for right about, uh, right about 30. So if I use another one, we would be overkill, so I'm just going to stick with that. Fill us back up. And then, I don't think we have any move speed bonuses yet. Um, no, 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 no. No, and we do have plus 10% move speed, 20% move speed. So you would essentially get 20% range up by taking that. I think that's worth it. Um. You know, it's going to cost us some of our damage, but 20% is not an insignificant amount of range. So we got a sensitive floor with the wound wards, or we can do a capulate dorm, which has no special factors. We're going to go with the wound ward one. Um, not because I want to avoid going to a new area, but actually because I want to... Uh, or going up against new enemies, but actually because I feel like sensitive floors are very useful um, in their own right. I did not catch where that uh, ghost man went. Or memory man, I guess would be the better way to put it, given the fact that they lead to memory rooms. Deal 2,000 damage in one attack on an enemy because we instant killed him. That's awesome. Okay, let's just get out of the way here real quick. And then over here. Okay, so he did not go over this way. So the secret room was actually attached to that room we were just in. We'll go find that because we could get a piece of Chapter 2 lore for it. Or we will get a piece of Chapter 2 lore for it, I should say. Not we could. Okay, maybe not. Maybe, uh... I thought he walked to the right out of this room. I out of the last room. Maybe it was this room where you walked into the wall from? No. Let me see something real quick. Okay, so yeah, he's not going this way. I was completely incorrect. Oh god. Why am I failing so hard right now? Come on, die. Thank you. And we got the rose, which is going to give us a thorns effect. We're going to pop one heal, which is, of course, another damage up. Um, I know I just kind of, like, interrupted myself while I was going on one direction. But I did kind of want to figure out which way to go for the memory room, man. 
Mr. White Chalk, not a threat to me right now. Mr. Red Chalk, very much a threat. Right, Mr. Green Chalk, very much a threat. And another Chalk upgrade. How many of these are there, and how many am I going to get on this one run? Uh, I'm going to wait for that Chalk Cloud to dissipate. Thank you. Plus one Chalk, your Chalk Clouds are now electrically charged. Okay. And this is all stacking very well, mind you. So he's going down, which will be our memory room. There are enemies in here. I don't know why I didn't think to look for that to begin with. Oh god, the wardrobe. Oh, that was close. Okay, and now we've got a couple things to investigate. We got a coin at least for that, and we got some lore. Let's see, the case of the furious ch chandelier. I've always had a taste for reclaimed things, the fashion designer said. The platinum crescent was originally considered vulgar, bourgeois bourgeoisie trash. Today it is known as the most beautiful sewing machine in the world. I keep it in my workshop. I'm here all day, every day, and I can't imagine it. it'd be safer anywhere else. She paused. Excuse me, am I boring you? Shuddering, Jim rubbed his eyes. No, he said. Just tired. Bad dreams keeping me up. Uh, that one is actually the one for donating 500 credits to the Guidance Counselor, which we got in the one missing last episode we recorded. Oh, I'm not in the room that I thought I was. I wanted to be here to go up. We've got a lot of chalk cloud spewers, which is not really the most threatening thing in the world. Honestly, if I had to pick a room type that didn't bother me, this would probably be it. Uh, we can pick up a juice box. I should probably use another one, but in case I get like a vexing vial or uh, just or one of the droughts or anything, I do want to uh, have it be possible to get the most out of this. Uh, we don't get that. We could get sock puppet, which is very good. Um, we're also going to use a juice box and buy a juice box. Okay, so now we're getting no damage up from credits, but the sock puppet is really good. When we're not moving, it's going to fire a double shot, giving us the chance to do double damage, giving us two times the chances to uh, insta-kill if we uh, stand still when we attack, which of course is not that uncommon. Um, a lot of enemies you do stand still to attack. So I think that is one item that is most certainly worth the 15 credits that we spent on it. It seems like I might have been going the right way for the boss to begin with. Because we are getting to... Oh, yep, this is another dead end. Okay, so yeah, I was actually headed right to the boss the first time through. Let's get back over here, let's go upwards. There is another branch here, which we will have to navigate. Uh, we'll try up first. Oops. Now I understand that room a bit better when you enter it from the lower end. We got another plus 12% dodge. I believe that puts us at plus 21%. Although I did just roll directly into that enemy. Um, what are we fighting? Okay, I have not seen this guy. The friendly footstools. You don't seem so friendly. It looks like you're playing Snake and you're not very good at it. Okay, this is not the worst boss that I've ever fought. In fact, he is one of the easier bosses I have fought thus far. Okay. Well, we might be able to finish him off here. Nope, not quite. He is moving much faster now. But we also have a time slow, so when we see him, we can... Oop. Okay, well I took an extra little bit of damage there. Uh, defeat the friendly footstools without taking damage. I was close. Some students claim that they've awoken to, the to a cacophony of muffled clacking noises and low shapes moving through the dormitories. 
While these reports generally re are, are generally ridiculed or ignored, it is true that the footstools seem to disappear as quickly as the groundskeepers can replace them. One theory is that the administrators have devised some kind of hideous creature tasked with enforcing curfews. A minority believe that Regan may have been responsible. No noting the hundreds of dozens of disjointed snake diagrams that have been observed in her notebooks. This last argument seems far-fetched given the strict house regulations about attempting to communicate with Edgewood's furniture. So there are actually a few things here that I haven't actually looked at. Um, sorry. A girl named Cordy awoke under a broken bookcase, confused and scared, having barely survived Gonroll and Regan's attack in Mr. L's classroom. Every time a Cordy awoke under the bookcase, of course, the school was different. The Edgewood Home for Lost Children is an uncertain place, and the hallways reorganized themselves in a variety of patterns. Strange things still danced on the chalkboards and sloshed in pots of stew, and somewhere Gonroll still placed, paced impatiently on an upper floor. This time, however, new creatures awaited her in the darkness. Cordy recalled only the classroom. Memories can be reset, if not destroyed. Certain teachings, however, remained. And thus you get kind of your introduction to both the persistent progression and, oh my god, we're on the boss floor. Both the uh, persistent progression, which is implied by the... Uh, so now these ones, if you attack them while their shield is up, they actually fire more lightning. So you do want to try to avoid that. This bramble here can be a pain. <coughs> Come on, instant kill. I need you. Thank you. Ooh, I got another sock thingy. What do you do? Plus one shot when not moving. Okay, so now, triple shot. I did not know that was possible. I did not know you could get another sock snake and it would just add another shot. And I suppose I should have guessed from the item description not being double shot, but plus one shot. But still, that is rather incredible. I mean, this run is pretty much doomed at this point, to be honest with you. We've only got 31 health filled, we've only got three juice boxes. But, triple shot is really good. Even if we have to stand still to use it. That thing was still alive. I did not expect that. Okay, so these flowers are just like machine gun versions of the little garbage cans earlier on. Not that bad. Oh god. Those things shattered. Juice boxes, come to me. Oh my god, why? Why am I so dumb? Okay, we're still taking damage, but at least we're gonna kill this guy. We have an extra life. All is not lost. I take that back. My earlier comments of my upcoming death were greatly exaggerated because we can respawn once. So it also raises the question of, you know, increases light radius significantly? That it does. You know, obviously there is something to be said for saving my juice boxes for the next life, but it doesn't really matter which life we use them on, we have the same amount of health left regardless. This just means that if I get into the boss fight, I have a better chance of making it work. Insta-kill, that's useful. And triple shot is always useful. I really did not know that the sock puppet could stack like that. I am a happy, happy man. And we will get rid of this dude, hopefully. Yes, thank you. Things are taking a lot more damage. You can definitely tell that we haven't gotten many damage ups. Because mainly the items that we've gotten have been to improve our chalk. Which is not a bad thing, but is certainly something to be noted. Okay, so this guy likes to teleport, it appears. Uh, where are you going? This is rather hard to keep up with, I won't lie. Oh my god.
My range just wasn't good enough to hit him there. Okay, we got him. Um, there wasn't anything up here, was there? No. Okay, so let's just get out of here before these lightning balls explode. And we got a room with a bunch of little spinning rock statues with some tokens around them. Oh god, of course it pulled in right as I got over to it. I am debating whether to use my juice box now or wait till my next life. That decision could very well be made up for me depending on how this goes. Now one thing that's nice about the I, the, the extra life here is unlike uh, the one up in Binding of Isaac which spawns you back in the last room you cleared, um, this one actually spawns you in the room that you're currently in. So when we die right now we come right back, we don't have to start this enemy over again, we just finish off the fight. Oh god, bullet hell. Let's see now, get rid of these guys, thank you. If we can get rid of half of the flowers, this will get much easier. We did actually just dodge a shot there. We do have good dodge chance, that's a benefit. And of course on larger single target enemies we can get, you know, three times damage against them which is going to help immensely. This floor is quite large. Oh god! Did that guy just explode into lightning or did he cast that lightning? I am not sure which the answer is. We got an extra juice box, that's good. Okay, he obviously cast the lightning because I just killed that last one and he did not explode into lightning. Okay, another one of these guys is kind of a problem. I do not enjoy this dude. Honestly, I would like to get rid of this lady first. And we killed him with a... This is a tough decision. Because if you remember, um, we have that item where plus 20% of our move speed becomes... I mean, where our increase in move speed becomes an increase in attack speed as well. So we could get another 20% move speed and another 20% attack speed or 20 damage. Um, I'm gonna go with this one I feel like I could use being faster and oh, that's not what I want. Uh, move speed bonuses also apply to attack range. Sorry, range not attack speed. But still that is hugely useful. Um, the boss is right there. I want to just go fight the boss because we're here and we could have a chance of beating her, but I also want to explore this last room. Okay, we didn't get anything out of it. So now our choices are two juice boxes, or we could get an extra 15% crit chance and a juice box I mean, alone. Um, we could also get the disquieting drought here, but that's not going to give us nearly as much benefit as the second juice box. So I'm going to go this route. And we're going to go take on the boss here. And hopefully this is going to go well. Seems we are in fact fighting Regan. Who is definitely a caster. Um, I do plan on spamming Chalk at her. Because if we beat her that's the end of this run. So I am looking forward to how that's going to go. Oh. You know, we don't have much chance to stop, but when we do, I should be stopping the fire to get as many hits as possible. Obviously, the insta-kill does not apply to bosses, in case you weren't sure on that. What might actually be wise is to go E and then R R R. -R. Okay, that did a good deal of damage. It also caused some really weird noises. Um, we still have five chalk left. Good. Okay, she might actually die on my first time in here. Let's uh, boost my health up because we're going to lose these juice boxes after this floor anyway. Come on. Die, Regan. Die. 
Die! Please, just die! I need to get in a position to hit her. Oh, oh Thorns effect! The Thorns killed her. And my first time through Chapter 2, we actually complete Chapter 2. <sighs> Cordy stood over Regan, victorious, and waited to see if the Capulets would appear as the one wards had. Instead, an adult figure in a suit emerged from the doorway. His face shifted like smoke and his voice seemed to carry from deep within the house. How impressive, he said. You are the greatest student we have. Cordy didn't see Regan's lips moving as he spoke. He strode towards her. We would be honored to answer your questions. As Cordy opened her mouth to answer, the man seemed to shimmer. Then she felt Regan's hand close on her ankle, and a terrible force seemed to drag her backwards. She found herself sealed inside Regan's lunchbox as the Capulet leader completed her dying spell. The false administrator melted into a pool of ink that vanished back into Regan's ruler, and the cheerful girl that walked out of the room looked like Cordy, but prettier and nicer and better, and the Capulet army chose her as their new leader. And thus, Chapter 2 was completed. Um, we have a lot of credits now. We do have four periods. So if I chose, I could ditch what we had in 18 more credits and get um, the pre-combustor here. Or not that, the power here. Which gives us basic attacks that are larger and can now destroy objects. We could attach... I mean, we could... Blah, blah, blah. We could um, equip that in just a few more credits really um which would be cool obviously in this last run like i mentioned was pretty much focused on chalk we got the arrows here we got this one where we heal from standing in them we got the electrical charge one we got coin drops spawning them we got 20 percent chance of not consuming chalk on use it was all around a crazy crazy good run for chalk um Oh, that was actually a sock parrot. I didn't realize that it was something different. We got the sock snake and the snock socks parrot. That makes sense. I understand. Um, so yeah, we got two wins. We've won twice in a row. And that's going to wrap it up for today's episode of Our Darker Purpose. Thank you guys for tuning in. That was a really good run and went very, very well. Um, shockingly well, really. And hopefully we can continue our luck on the next run, going all the way to Chapter 3. Um, at this point, I may start splitting them up by chapter. Obviously, this one took a little bit less time for Chapter 2, but it's still approaching an hour. Um, and we did move pretty quickly through the later floors. Regardless, thank you guys for watching. Um, again, thank you to all of you who came over since Northern Lion mentioned me. I very much appreciate you checking the channel out. And have a good one, everyone. Take care, and I will see you next time. Later.